Welcome back to City on the Hill Gaming. I am Ryan, joined by Daniel. Hello. Peter. Hello. Ben. Hello. Grant. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Oh, oh I'm so <laughs> mad. <laughs> I'm so mad. Greg, go. <laughs> go. I'm so upset. Okay. Um, so we are here tonight. I thought about doing that. We are here tonight for me to be mad at Grant for a little bit, but I'll get over it. Um, that's fine. <laughs> oh, that was great. Beautifully done. And I heard it the second you started. I knew what was happening, but I couldn't stop it. And that's okay. Set the tone. That's all I'm doing. I'm respecting it. Um, <laughs> we're here tonight to not actually play anything. Uh, we're just here to have a long discussion. Uh, something, something clickbait title, something, something ogl situation something something hashtag podcast future or something something something, something wailing face. and gnashing of teeth yeah something something <clears throat> hit that subscribe button i guess um all that out of the way <laughs> i got daniel with hashtag laughing. not sponsored hashtag <laughs> not a sponsor um <laughs> nordvpn.com slash city on the gaming never gonna happen and that's okay uh so uh, all that to if say, you go there you get a 404 <laughs> error yeah, you do <laughs> but it's our four for error, and we love it dearly. Um, so we're we're here. My mostly, island. That's right. Uh, we're here to make some announcements uh, about tr truly, actually, about the future of the podcast. That's not actually a, a joke. Um, uh, first, and and this one's a little different from the rest, but I'll I'll make it up front. Um, for the time being, and this could literally change before we record again. I don't actually know. Um, this is the podcast crew now. Uh, both Shanine and Andrea have had to step away from the show, uh, which is perfectly okay. Everybody who does this does cause this because they're nice people, um, not because there's anything like financially incentivizing them or I don't have dirt on anybody other than Daniel, um, just because I've known him a long time. Uh, but the two of them are both stepping away, um, and we may have more people on with us in the future. We have always had sort of a... A open door policy sounds like a weird way to say it, but essentially an open door policy. Folks have come and gone as as they needed to, and that's a part of what we do. Um, and that is very much okay. We will miss both of them. Uh, hopefully we can get both of them on in the future for some kind of one shot. I'm hoping to get some more uh, art done by Andrea for some projects that I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and uh, I'm hoping yeah, you will still hear from them in the future. It lasted, so. Yes, and it was it was great to have both of them. I thought they they both uh, fit in with us very nicely uh, in their own unique ways. And I will miss those flower facts uh, from Andrea because um, you know you learn things on, on City on the Hill apparently, not on purpose, but you know it it happens on the side. Uh, so hey, accidental knowledge is knowledge just the same. It's the best knowledge because you didn't have to to put in the effort. Or maybe that's the worst knowledge. I don't know which. There you go. Um, <laughs> so the best worst. The the <clears throat> actual reason we are here, um, and when I said the, the hashtag OGL situation, that is a large portion of, of tonight's discussion. Uh, for those not familiar, we play what is known as Level Up Advanced 5th Edition uh, from Morris and the fine folks over at Eaton Publishing. Excellent uh, game system. Um, but it uses something called an open game license, uh, which in the case of, of well, Ian publishing... To, to be very specific, it uses yes. the, the open, open game, game license. That's true. license. That is a specific name uh, versus just a game license in general. That's fair. Um, which is provided by Wizards of the Coast, creators of Dungeons & Dragons, uh, owned by Hasbro. Um, so all that to say, for those unfamiliar... <laughs> that owned by Hasbro part is going to be very important yeah. to this conversation. Yeah, that's continues. really where this conversation centers if we're just being entirely blunt up front. Um, Wizards slash Hasbro slash someone, I just suppose it's not necessarily important. Um, is Let's call at, him Steve. We're going to call him Steve. We're not going to call him Steve. There <laughs> yeah. may be a Steve, and I don't want to put that on anybody. That's not fair. Yeah. Um, there are being, there are changes. He knows what he did. That, <laughs> that Watsi is considering <laughs> making to their open game license that not only affect um, Ian Publishing and, and Level Up, but affect a lot of, a lot of things. Um, I, I will let Grant and Peter a dig into some of it. fraction of uh, the entire RPG yeah. industry, yeah, it's, it's not insubstantial. Uh, yeah. We, we so, won't so, go too deep on it, but suffice yeah, to so say, just, it is impactful. Yeah, so super quickly sum this up, because this is not just a complex topic, but it's also a topic that is 
constantly changing as we go. We're recording this on January 18th, and we don't normally try and date these, but that's important for context because yeah, there the were multiple announcements fluid. just today that impact this. This has changed so, three times since yeah. we had the discussion about when we were going to have the discussion. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly, and know. this is one of those asterisk, this is a breaking news story. Yes. Uh, do, 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 this will be things outdated do, 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 do. before I've edited and uploaded. Developing situation, yes. uh, things stated here might not, uh, you know, might change due to, uh, yep, yeah, due, yeah, due to exactly. it. It could have so, changed again before we hit, before I hit the stop button on the recording, frankly. It, very well. Well, All right, moving it's, on. It's, it's past business hours on the West Coast. I'm not too worried about that. Okay, um, that's fair. <clears throat> But it's not past journalism hours. <laughs> no, it's not. So the open game license created in 2000 um, is kind of been a backbone of the ecosystem of third party publishers for, well, about 22 years now. Uh, and this is what has allowed things like Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, um, games by Cobalt Press, Goodman Games, Tunnels and Trolls, all of these different uh, third-party publishers to grow and expand as part of the larger system of games that are dnd like compatible or semi-compatible with Dungeons & Dragons, etc. To very, very quickly sum up the idea of the open game license, um, the, the basic idea is we are, you know, uh, Wizards set as part of a way to grow the hobby and grow their part of the hobby, said, all right, we're going... Uh, under Brian Dancy was one of the guys spearheading this. Um, there were plenty of other people involved. Um, not too important to get into that. Basically, the idea is we're going to take our our game is going to be licensed. We'll have a piece of it that is licensed under the open game license. We're talking about Wizards of the Coast here, and that's a system. And then that is a system reference document. Basically, it lays out how the system works and some basic features and basic examples that you can use in your games and that's the key point it's stuff that anybody can use if they publish stuff compatible with it the idea being through network externalities the game that's published grows and the hobby grows network externalities are this idea in business that things are more valuable if there are other people using them if i am the only person who owns a phone that phone is not actually useful. It has no value. I can't call anyone. If one other person right. has a phone, okay, now it has value. But if a hundred people have a phone, even if I'm in a small percentage of those conversations, my phone still has a lot more value than if only one other person or no one else had a phone because I can now call a hundred people if I need to or want to. And that's the idea with the OGL. Hey, we're going to publish Dungeons and Dragons, but then anyone else can make adventures and splat books and third party games that use those same rules. But the idea is the entire hobby grows and people will pick up D&D content and other third party publishers content as suits the game they want to run. Hey, I found a cool campaign I want to run by Goodman Games. I don't even know if Goodman Games makes campaigns. I'm just making this up. Bear with me. You know, the campaign looks really cool, and I picked up one of their um, books for character classes. Um, but, you know, I think, uh, you know, their campaign also features some psychic stuff. You should probably pick up the, uh, you want to play a psychic, you should probably pick up the psychic handbook from... Uh, Kobold, Kobold Crest is the one for the stuff that you're talking about. Goodman Games does a lot of old school stuff, and for cool. Psychic, there's a company called uh, Dreamscard Press. Not Continue the point on. I was trying to make. I was literally Fair making enough, but something I'm as we go. I'm giving you the actual examples as we go. So. Good to know. But the idea being, and I'm going to steal uh, or paraphrase Terry Pratchett here, the idea is stop fighting over pieces of a small pie. Everybody gets a share of the pie, and then we enlarge the pie. And it worked and really it, well for 20 years. It has oh, worked it, great. It did. It's continued to work well. Now, is, does it compare to the video game market? No, it's a drop in the bucket. But almost everybody recognizes the name Dungeons & Dragons. That was not the case 20 years ago, except as, oh, isn't that that Satanist game? <laughs> right? So don't get me started on that. But Somewhere it's Derek grown White enormously because... Up, right? 
the entire yes. industry has grown and it's made a lot of people, including Wizards of the Coast, very wealthy. However, it's also made a bunch of much smaller content creators like myself a nice little cash positive hobby income. Yes. And, and that's the thing. Even people who aren't making a ton of money feel comfortable or felt comfortable, let's use the past tense here, yeah. publishing content under the open game license. And it should be noted that the license is separate from the system. This is a point of common confusion, yep. but there are games published under the open game license that have nothing to do with Dungeons and Dragons. I believe the core rules, like the SRD for Fate, the Fate system, it is was, for a an, while. It's under was a, at least for a little while, OGL. Oh, is it, is it now Creative Commons? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Fred but Hicks the, confirmed that on Twitter. Recently. The OGL, which is a 900 word license of, hey, just it's not quite share alike, but it's, hey, it's cool, guys. You can use this to enrich the game ecosystem, has worked great and has been something that a lot of publishers and creators have used, even outside the DD and F20. Fantasy 20 ecosystem. Wizards has decided that they would like a bigger cut of that pie. And there, the, there's been a lot of controversy about this in large part because the original OGL, the, what's called the OGL 1.0A, if you see that around the internet, had some uh, language in it that made it perpetual and depending on the lawyer you talk to, maybe irrevocable, maybe not. But those are two different things in legalese. But it had language in there that allowed it to be updated. Well, that wizard, the only people who can update it are Wizards of the Coast. And as it turns out, Wizards of the Coast, under what we all collectively believe is pressure from upper management who are reporting to shareholders and hey, isn't late-stage capitalism kind of crap, um, is, shall we say, putting the screws on them to turn D&D into a source of continual income and continual revenue, which means that they are changing the OGL. Peter. Yeah, so um, basically what this means for us is because Level Up is based on the OGL using the fifth edition system reference document. Grant, you find these terms for a reason. It is in severe legal limbo right now. Yeah. Um, the folks that run EN Publishing, the very nice small third-party company that created Level Up, uh, are in the process of trying to determine what to do next. Um, on the table are some options about updating the system so it is no longer dependent on the OGL. And there's ways of doing that that are more and less legally risky. But because, they, because of widespread public outcry about the terms of this new OGL 1.1, which had... I think it's fair to say in business terms, a entire pharmacy of poison pills in it. Um, there's a lot of like internal debate going on. People are consulting with legal counsel. It's a huge mess. The whole industry um, that has been to one extent or another dependent on the OGL is in this very uncomfortable legal limbo kind of situation, not knowing if they're going to be able to continue to publish things from existing product lines, um, whether things that they have already published under the OGL will remain legal for sale. Like there have been um, people saying, you know, like, hey, if you've got something that's based on the OGL, back it up because they may be vanishing from digital, you know, retailers and you may not be able to get them again. I am one of those people, by the way. I don't think the odds of that are super high, but I think this is definitely in a better safe than sorry kind of state right now. Yep. And with all of that in mind, we are contemplating what moving next? away from something that is this legally entangled, at least until we know kind of what the situation is. Because right now there's constant, you know, updates of things like 
things are, get introduced, possibly walked back. There's a lot of public outcry. There's a huge amount of controversy. There's a lot of very angry people out there. Once again, yeah. I would count myself among their number. And um, to be clear, rightly so. Yeah. And not to put too fine a point on it, but not the entire RPG industry is based on the OGL. There's a lot of I really know. cool stuff out there. And frankly, there's stuff that fits better with our super wholesome, family-friendly, low-violence play style that this just gave us a really good excuse to experiment with. And, and so I will say, in... there is a single thing in the updated version that I did think was a needed change, but it was a very specific thing, not remotely related to the rest of it. There is wording that would have given Wizards more control over pulling the license from people who were using it to release super inappropriate systems, like con systems with deeply inappropriate, like racist content. That's something yeah. I, I don't necessarily, I, th I think that is a good change they should make that they have the, you know, the workability to not have their name published with that stuff. Sure. The rest of it, uh, or at minimum, a lot of the rest I, of it, I will also deeply problematic. I did appreciate that change. The, you know, no NFTs thing. Also, also not a bad option, fine. presumably, yes. Um, Those are yeah. a, Although Hasbro is releasing NFTs right now, so it's a bit hypocritical. Well, yeah, know. it is. Um, there, there were some small things that they did I thought made sense and were good for the community. Um, there were some other things that were not what I would refer to as good for the community um, no. in a lot of senses. And, and look, if you only play Dungeons & Dragons, this is not substantially affecting you from a what you're playing standpoint, at least not for now. Um, there's a lot of other talk about leaks of all sorts of things that we're not going to bother getting into because who knows mm -hmm. at this point. Um, but what it means for us in in the short term is we're going to, I don't want to say sunset, um, banish. We're going to banish. No, we're not going to banish anything. Um, we're going to temporarily set aside. <laughs> I just like the word banish. Sorry. Um, we're yeah, gonna it's not better than sunset. <laughs> it's yeah. differently worse. Yeah. Um, we're going to set were, aside. If you were looking for a less intense term, you yes. have failed, sir. Uh, that's probably true. Um, we're going to set aside the, the season four campaign as it stands currently, both the story and the system. Um, once the fine folks over uh, with Mr. Morse and Ian Publishing figure out what it is they're going to do and have released said something, um, we will revisit their system, presumably. We like them. They seem yeah. like nice people. Uh, we were one of the first people Which to hop on, I on level up. I want to like, look at it again. Yeah, even if this goes super well, like, DOGLing a system that the three core books run to about 1,600 pages is going to take, as they say, a hot minute. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and, there is and a perhaps, lot of labor involved in that. It should perhaps be noted that when we say DOGLing, we're kind of talking about removing the D the D twenty fifth edition stuff from that that was released under the OGL. Because again, the OGL is yeah. just a license. There are some games where they're just going to switch to a different license and they'll be fine because they're not using the fifth edition system reference document as the core rule set. This Pathfinder is not second edition is one of the systems that's in that particular boat. They're sure. like, okay, yeah, we, you know, we came up with a whole different system. We were using the OGL to make it easier for people to, you know, write stuff for us instead of us, you know, referencing the work of other companies. Since this is going to be a pain now, we're going to do something else. Yeah, Creative Commons, yeah. which is also whatever. not like irrelevant that for us. Orc thing that they're working the on actually, too. but yeah. yeah, things like Apocalypse World uh, was originally OGL, and then it switched to a Creative Commons license, I believe. And so. you may even see the involvement of the fine people who run Linux, as at some point some licenses may end up in the hands of nonprofits that handle open yeah. source licensing, including the Paizo people who run Linux. is pushing for that, but that's again, there's so much news yeah. around this, it's probably it's not worth getting into here. Also very far down the line, presumably. Um, well, we'll, well see. we should be seeing some of that stuff next month, actually. Oh, but well, there you go. Um, so what what does that mean for us? That means uh, we need to find something else to do because um, we're bored and we like uh, doing this. So uh, what we're looking at doing, and this is open to change, presumably, is finding other systems we're interested in. We've already made a list uh, and running them for a single session or a couple of sessions or maybe falling in love and never playing anything else ever again. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, you know how we've run like some feng shui games and stuff? Yep. Kind of like that. 
kind of like that. You, you're just going to see us pop in between different things. I will run some of it. I will certainly not run some of these because I learned about them tonight. So presumably I shouldn't be the <laughs> one in charge, uh, but that's fine. Um, yeah, uh, Peter and I definitely nonsense. kind of took our RPG folders and bookcases and turned them over onto Ryan's head and said, pick one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, like I, I should I should just take a picture of the shelves next yeah. to me. Well, maybe upload it with the episode. <laughs> um, I should not. It's horrifying. <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. Um, so now we're going to talk about some of that and some of the future. Actually, you know what? Let's do the future stuff now. Because it occurred to me today while I was thinking about what we were going to talk about today that we have hit, um, at least in terms of podcast creation, not uploading, that's later this year, we've hit our fifth anniversary. Um, right. So we, we launched nice. in January of 2018. We started uploading in April of 2018 after I received a fair amount of very good advice from Grant and Peter. Um, and so there will be some things coming to commemorate the fifth anniversary. I've got some ideas. This literally all happened today, so we'll see what happens. Um, and, uh, the other thing is that finally, I suppose we should actually do some merch. Um, we have a list somewhere. Uh, oh, that's going to be a problem. Uh, there's a list, I promise, of t-shirt ideas, uh, some of which will become real. A new one of which I came up with today, uh, that is what I'm now going to refer to Daniel as, as, uh, Daniel, the puns will continue until morale improves, Martin. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I intend on just releasing a shirt that says that if no one else already has. I mean, that's, that's fair enough. Um, so what you can do, dear listeners, is scrub through all of the old episodes <laughs> and find the moments where we said, we should put that on a shirt and then, and then put those, those in a list and then send them to us. Yes. Or, or don't. I understand that you're not going to, and that's fine. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of work. And for that, asking about have our, 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 our thanks. Dying, thanks. Yes. Um, but presumably you will see some merch later this year. Uh, presumably shirts, possibly stickers, and who knows, cell phone cases are popular. Why not? Um, that's how I, this works. I guess. If you can find a good deal on coffee mugs, also I wouldn't that. mind having a portable hole. Print on demand hey, stuff is no one ex a little expensive, but boy, is it easy to get your stuff on anything you want. I and made cufflinks oh, yeah. for a Saving the Game listener once. I hate yeah, cufflinks, yeah, but I, I kind of want those. That. Um, okay, that's beside the point. We're back, I promise. Um, so there's more stuff coming this year. We're not going anywhere. We're just going to have to make some adjust. Huh. Uh, we're just going to have to make some adjustments to what we're doing. So, list of things we're making adjustments to what we're doing. Huh. Yeah, this is what happens when I give them a running Word document that they all have access to. I read things yeah, while we're recording and it causes dude, a problem. Okay, don't we're fine. Read to give, to give you the uh, document. Yeah. To, so, to give you the reason why you paused, I put in fifth hill to the right and straight on till morning why not? as a fifth anniversary shirt. We'll see what happens. Um, so, things <laughs> things we're almost certainly going to do. Uh, I want to run some amount, probably a couple sessions of a system called Coyote and Crow. Uh, I have spoken to the creators to get their blessing, which is not something I would normally bother with, but this is a special circumstance in that Coyote and Crow is produced by a company made entirely of indigenous game designers uh, in a system that is entirely based on indigenous characters. And as a podcast, we are, uh, by my estimation, approximately uh, 3% indigenous, and that's probably aiming a little high. Um, so, you know in an effort to be respectful because that's the other thing other than family friendly and puns that we do. We try and be respectful people. Uh, I wanted that's, to, that's 3% by mass. <laughs> yes. 3% by mass. Yeah. Um, again, that's probably so. And we're not small guys. Volume. No, we're not. <laughs> I, do, I do appreciate that largely replaceable, replaceable jobs should be measured in terms of mass. Like you can, you can swap me out with anybody. I'm just a voice, whatever. Just <laughs> give me 600 pounds of podcaster. I thought you were going to ask me how. Uh, I thought you were going to ask what you measured awful by, which I was going to be another very specific reference like, for Daniel. Yeah, um, I need 600 pounds um, if of you're going to, to <laughs> ideally have it spread out over at least three hosts, four if you can get a bunch of skinny ones. <laughs> no, but ain't nobody got time for Sorry, that. Sorry, for some reason, uh, I just pictured a doctor yelling at a nurse. It's like, I need 600 pounds of podcaster stat. <laughs> Are we trying to put Thank goodness we're not in England. I don't know how the metric system works, so that would probably be good. From two oh, that's to money over five. there. Oh. <laughs> that's a lot of podcaster. 
We it can't is. afford that. Uh, okay, so but I know how. I I do also know how you measure <laughs> awful. Yes, I know. It's, you, it's by volume. You, you me- no, you measure awful in lots. It's an awful lot. Oh, there it Ba-dum-bum. is. Okay, got me. Good. I'm proud of you. Uh, so all of that to say, we're probably going to try playing Coyote and Crow at some point. Uh, I've also requested someone run Honey Heist because I want to play a heist game and it seems adorable. Which is not what I should normally say about a heist game, but you know, hey, whatever happens. Um, I have also requested uh, Grant run Impulse Drive because anything that allows me to remotely pretend I'm playing Star Wars makes me happy. Um, yes, and as a quick note on that, my plan for Impulse Drive, and I haven't mentioned this to anyone y- uh, yet, uh, is that we come up with kind of the setting here for an Impulse Drive game. Impulse Drive, for those who don't know, is a powered by the apocalypse space game designed to replicate things like Star Wars firefly um mass effect. farscape mass effect anything in that genre that isn't quite as noble shall we say as star trek um more fantasy less fiction but, um more uh gunslingy roguey playing it off by the hip okay that kind gotcha, of gotcha. approach and you know aliens and fun but the um my plan for it because we're not going to do just a straight Star Wars game is do a microscope session beforehand with the players to set, to create the setting because we've not featured microscope on this show. Oh, this is a good idea. And then <clears throat> turn that into what we're playing our impulse drive game in. This would be like a session zero. Uh, yeah. Microscope is a system uh, where you create a setting, going around the table, adding things. It's it's kind of formalized yes anding for uh, setting creation, but it creates sort of arcs, and you can kind of drill deep into parts of the history of a setting, and then pick a, a point in there to play. I have done this before with a previous game group way back before I ever like did saving the game or anything. It's real fun. It works super well. Yep. And it gets a lot of buy-in from everybody. It is a very good way to start a campaign. <clears throat> so that's my plan. Uh, other things that are on the list, obviously Roll for Shoes is always on the list. Uh, per Heck Ben's yeah. request, uh, Feng Shui 2 is apparently also on the list. I'll talk to Justin. Um, and uh, Ed, I believe this was either Peter or Grant. I want to say it was Grant uh, mentioned a system that I know nothing about other than having heard the name on saving the game in the past uh gumshoe which is a that was me actually oh, that was peter okay uh detective yep. thing it looks interesting um and detective does sound correct for us so i'm, I'm not opposed to that um yep. we've discussed some other things some other fantasy based systems um yeah i know greg I think... has one he's a big fan of that oh, is sure what is what's the one at the bottom greg the the well, bf Oh, basic fantasy. Yeah, basic fantasy, yeah. Basic fantasy RPG page, as, as so an option. Oh, there's the a second page. The I page. hadn't scrolled in a while. Okay. Uh, and yes, thank you, Greg, for keeping notes. Uh, we've also discussed uh, Pendragon, GURPS, and Fate, and some other stuff. Um, yeah, I'd like to do some more looking at Forbidden Lands and possibly throw that on the list, too, but I have to finish like looking through it. Not a name I know, but sure, why not? We'll poke it. Content appropriate. It's another, it's another fantasy game. And I will say there are about a billion things you could play. Um, oh, yeah. We are a little mm-hmm. more picky and choosy f- purely for, uh, well, a, a, accessibility of materials and B, for content reasons, because family friendly podcast um, and also just personal choices. Like I'm not a big uh, Cthulhu guy, so you're unlikely to see anything like that. But there is a wide variety of options. We will explore a wide variety of options, presumably. Or we'll play Honey Heist once, fall in love, and this will be a Honey Heist actual play podcast somehow. I don't even think that's technically possible, but sure, y- you know. It'll We've done a lot of not technically running possible through things. Grant Howitt's games, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or just replaying the entirety of four seasons of Leverage, but as bears. Yeah. <laughs> I don't hate that. Never mind. We're going to move on. Um, yeah, that's, that's I mean, a that's lot an to, option. Uh, I don't need that access. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a lot to comb through. No. Sounds really. Was that a bear fur joke? Yeah, it was it's a honey a, bun. It's, oh, it's, honey it's a honeycomb. Okay, okay. All right. I went, I went it works on so many levels. It's great. It's a proud. Three well, out it's, of ten. it's great. I, listen, I got a really good drone out of Peter. 
that's that's really all you're ever aiming for in life. I, I feel that. Um, Sweet pun, bro. Now let's move on. <laughs> that's right, baby. Uh dab dab <laughs> on them, I guess. Um okay, so that's that's it. That's you know, that's what we're tweet. doing. We're <sighs> we're making adjustments. We're doing we're doing the thing we always do. The puns do. will not be going no, away. No, that's never going to change. Uh, the family friendliness will never go that is away. Part the of our brand. Faith based acceptability will never go away. We are who we are. We're just having to adapt, which is what we do anyway. So why not? Um, and look, I, am I thrilled about this? No. Um, did I also know where our fourth fourth campaign story was going? Also, no. So this is you know a good time to figure that out, maybe. So I really still posit that you what's happening is yeah, I'm stalling I, essentially yeah, for the entire day. I still campaign. posit that you not knowing where the campaign going is not a bad thing. I posit that it's a dangerous thing. Um but those are not mutually exclusive, I suppose. Uh so all that to say the night hammer will return maybe level up will return probably. Um we will return good lord willing and the creek don't rise absolutely. Um and the puns aren't going anywhere. You can count on that one, probably. That's we don't really hang our hat on. We'd have to have other a one hundred percent cast turnover to get rid of the puns. I think it, you probably have to lose me too, because Daniel's a bad enough influence. I've started making them by accident. Yes, <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> good, yeah. Good, good. Uh, so you know, some things change. Uh, a lot of the things that I think. The things that, and I don't want to say don't matter because that's disrespectful, the things that don't make us us are changing, the things that make us us aren't. And I think that's ultimately what matters because yeah, I think that's why the, people listen. Um, the clothes will change. The people are still going to be here. What he said. Um, the, the puns will continue until morale improves. We are who we are. It is what it is. Um <laughs> We have, we're not ripping off Arby's. That's a different legal battle I don't want. They have the meats and the lawyers. The meats and the lawyers. We, we, are, we have Arby's a lawyer in our Patreon supporters, them, them, them. But, but he's only one man, and I can only expect so much of him. Um, so, all of that yeah, to say... Free consultation is not on the list of things that we no, can expect. That's no. not how Patreon works. Um, that seems very legally not. problematic uh, so all, all of that to say we're not going anywhere we're just making some adjustments we will presumably be back in our heaviest air quotes possible approximately every other week schedule um, we do have some other things coming up I have some one shot scheduled with some other people coming up you're going to still hear from us we're still going to do nonsense it's what we do here. We are the nonsense factory. Oh, that's also going on the list. Okay. Something about a nonsense factory. We'll we'll get there eventually. That's fine. We're going to be us. We're going to do our thing. We'll make adjustments to the things we have to make adjustments to because that's the pro that's life. That is reality. Sometimes you have to adjust and, you know, figure out what you're going to do instead. I have learned in literal 5 years of of making this content um that whenever something changes in a way i don't understand god has taken care of it at some point he has you know regardless of of what has happened things have changed it's still been fine it's still been what we're supposed to be as a show because i think we're supposed to be something very specific and i think we're doing a pretty okay job of it so far we're here to make you, I I think, this was not why I started this show, but we're here to make you laugh and we're here to do it in a way that your kids can also listen to and that I'm willing to listen to because I keep trying to find new things to listen to and I keep having to turn them off 10 minutes into the episode because I don't like what I hear. And that's a me problem. And I embrace the fact that that's a me problem. That's fine. Um, but it's a problem we can at least vaguely attempt to solve or solve for my own listening purposes at minimum and that's what we started this for and i think we've become something unique into ourselves and not in a bad way in a way that i don't have any intention of changing and i'm rambling and daniel's unmuted his mic so i'm gonna let him say something so i'll stop daniel 
Um, yeah, I uh, was actually just going to say that I, I, I think having to adapt to change is, I mean, it's just the human condition, really. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to navigate this as best we can. And yeah, I do. I do hope that uh, people are here as much for the, uh, as much for the people on the podcast as they are for whatever content we have and however we uh, react to it. But yeah, I I appreciate that. Uh, you know, we are trying to be the content that we want to see in the world. And I guess that's, that's pretty important. So I like yeah. that phrase. Um, and and I, should... I stole it from Gandhi, I think. Definitely not accurate, but close. I, I paraphrased. Yeah, there you go. That's what we're going to call that. Um, be the change a, you want to see in the world. Yeah, <laughs> that's a loose definition, but sure. All right. Um, fair enough. Uh, with all due respect, he's not wrong. Uh, I do agree with him. Um, the other thing, and I should say this, though I, I suppose it's moderately obvious from the discussion we're having, while you may still hear some 5e content on the podcast feed, um, it is not to be rude, or for lack of a better way of saying it, the thing the vast majority of people understand, I suppose, um, it is not something I think you are likely to hear on the main show feed. Uh, when it comes to season four or whatever name I give the thing we're doing now, City on a Hill, colon, we try lots of things or something like that. The Wonder Years. Yeah, there you go. It's probably not that. Um, the Wander Years. I don't hate that. That's closer. I don't. I don't hate that. Um, yeah, I don't hate that either. We'll That's come back to that. Good. Uh, yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, I love the folks at Wizards of the Coast. They make two of my favorite things. Um, but over the last few years, they have made a lot of decisions that I have not necessarily agreed with, and so. Maybe not even so much for my own personal comfort, but for the sake of what we're doing, at least for the main game, those things need to be set aside. And I don't anticipate that changing even when their system changes. Um, that's just where we're at right now. I don't love it, but I think it's necessary. And I think if it's for the comfort of some, it's one of those literally no reason not to things which means it's what we're gonna do um so like i said i'm not gonna say you're never gonna hear something produced by wizards of the coast on this show again that uh, i'm certainly not gonna make you that promise but it is not what you're gonna predominantly hear going forward um saying something unimaginable changing uh, and i hate to say it like that because that's sort of how it feels now a little bit, but, um, well, that's where we are. I think the, I think the things that are going to change that would have to change are entirely out of our purview or control. So that's yeah. just something that, you know, we're just going to have to, uh, watch the tides on. We'll lean heavily um, on don't expect it. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I think I, I agree that, and and I guess as a as a point of clarification, Wizards of the Coast owns like two of yeah, there you go. the best games that uh like the best, richest, most complex sort of games that have ever existed. And I don't think in recent years they've been very good stewards of that. It it's um, it's less of a, a, a what yeah. they have and a more of how they've handled it. Yeah, is, it's, I think the situation it's the fact that in they a lot of cases we're in. They don't even get credit for creating it. They get credit for currently owning it. Fair, yes. Um, and, and I will say, and there are, you know, I, I've said multiple times since we've started this, there are literally not infinite, but pretty close to infinite different things you can play. Um, a vast majority of them don't fall under a problematic licensure. And so, why not? 
Yeah. And yeah, like, even beyond Ralph and that, I have these huge RPG wish lists that we've just been aching to try out. There's also oh, yeah. that. And <laughs> this is this is a perfect time to do it. Like, yeah. this is a great time to just try new stuff, try all these cool and, things that we've bought over the years and haven't had a chance to play. And if I if I can as well, there's a, a useful analogy that I've seen here. Role-playing games, the systems, are rather like game consoles. They are the mechanism by which a game exists. People write games, they create games, but the games that we play, the stories we create, exist in the context of and using a game system, but the game system doesn't, as a rule, create the story for you. There are, uh, there are exceptions here because there are some very story-driven games that are like one-player games, but we're getting into the weeds on that you know if you think of it in terms of like a video game console the console has certain restrictions on what it can do think of you know like a old nes system versus an atari right they're programmed differently certain things work better on some than others but you're not going to say oh yeah i only play nes you, you could say we're staying in the library we're just changing the bookshelf yeah Essentially. Yeah. But ultimately what you're after, I hope, are the stories that are told in these different systems. And hopefully we are providing fun as a result of that and something for you to listen to. And perhaps, oh, this system allows me to tell these kinds of stories or something like that. Maybe I should pick that up. And to a certain degree, there's some value in providing consistency. But there's also value in saying, hey, let's try all sorts of things so that anybody can find something they like. That is not what we have typically done, but I don't consider it a bad thing for us to be doing. Well, and on a personal note, I think you're getting braver about trying new systems. When we started, I think you were like, I'm going to sit in my, my D&D house because that's, that's where I, I know it's safe. And now you're like, wait, it's all great. Well, and it was also when we started this, I picked 5e expressly because I knew it's what people were listening to. It wasn't even what I, I had played two whole hours of 5e when we started this. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, before that, I'd been playing Pathfinder. If I thought people would have listened, I'd have done a Pathfinder actual play. But 5e was where everyone was, so. They probably would now. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're not wrong. And we're looking at that <clears throat> minor spoilers for a completely different thing. But yeah, you know, at some point you got to rip the gummy flavored bandaid off to quote Greg from earlier and um, you know, make a change. Um, Um, Let's, let's never think about flavored band-aids again. (laughs) No, no, it's no, it's not a flavored bandaid. It's a, it's a, it's flavored like a bandaid. This is not not any better. Ryan, (laughs) grab the the ejector. Like eject, eject. It's fine. It's not important. (laughs) So I'll, all of that to say, pull like up, I've like I've said about a half dozen times, uh, we're not yep. going anywhere. We're just going to make some adjustments. You will still hear our nonsense. Uh, I promise. Uh, ho- hopefully, I keep that promise. I don't see any reason not to. Um, and, and to the five of to to the five of you and to the six other people. One, two, I think that's right. Six other people who've been regular members of the show in the past, and all of you brave souls who have come on here without really knowing me. Uh, for me to run one single game session for you, Lord love you. I don't know why you did it, but thank you. Um, th- thank you to the lot of you for putting up with my nonsense and allowing me to facilitate more nonsense. Sure, something like that. Um, I can't... I mean, look, I could try to do this on my own, literally, but I don't think it would translate super well or be nearly as interesting to listen to because I'm bad at puns. Um, and, and not in the Ryan way that only, Daniel's bad yeah. puns. Like, that's a good thing. I'm just bad yeah, and at them. Like, Ryan only has, like, three or four voices max. So, oh, that's like, not it'll true. get... I have yeah. way more than that. They're just not appropriate, and that's why I've stopped using them. Um, they're really, frankly, quite rude. I I learned them when I was much younger, and I don't do them anymore. Uh, they would not I mean, be appropriate. I mean, there's... I also do remember, like, that month in uh, high school where you just kept... Uh, putting on a Russian accent because you'd finally cracked it. Uh, um, but that's beside the point. So, uh, 
it's it's easier than it used to be. You learn things. They're not always good um, or repeatable. Yeah, really got to filter some of those accents out. But that's beside the point. That's why we don't do that yeah, here. Um, and I we say, grow and we change as people. That's so, uh, and when we do get to Coyote and the Crow, um, it will be sans a lot of deeply stereotypical, inappropriate uh, uh, first world people references which may make us sound slightly less interesting, but far more appropriate. Um, and that is the whole point of, of uh, doing that appropriately. So um, we will still be ourselves. We will just be ourselves um, politely and treating our neighbors like we should, like God intended. We'll yeah, be sure, ourselves, that. but yeah. it will be ourselves, but we're also playing characters who are not ourselves. So square that with your own brains. We are I acting. I try not to. Um, <laughs> that's on the list of things it's better if i don't think about because i'll just ha have a headache um so thank you for listening uh thank you for putting up with us for the last 52 minutes of of all of this because i think it was a discussion that as much as this is truly uh the deepest and most whatever thing we have actually ever recorded um at some point i think we could have just made a swap and not worried about it, but I think this merits a discussion um, and it lets you know where we're headed and that there are things that are other options and they are good things. And there are more than just these reasons to consider them. Um, yeah. And I, I think transparency is important because we are a small uh, crew running this thing we're and we are, we, we are a late petite podcast. Yeah. I said uh, boutique, but that's also true. Um, Le Petit Podcast. Bespoke. Anyway. Bespoke. Yeah, bespoke. yeah, we're a bespoke podcast. We're artisanal. We're not that hipster. Um, okay. Um, anyway. We have the beers for We do. That's very true. Uh, I do think that uh, this level of transparency is good. And again, this is us, I mean, wanting to uh, be the sort of content we want to see in the world and you know making big grand changing decisions without a lot of forewarning is kind of why we had to make this in the first place well and, and i'm a big astonishingly big believer instead of why uh of why not um so you're going to get uh, over the coming months or however long we decide you're going to get a lot of why not um because that's uh interesting i think so um Thank you to Peter and Greg and Ben and Daniel and Grant for hanging out um, and uh, also helping explain things I didn't even understand about this situation um, and for just talking it with me about what we can do. It is a bottomless rabbit hole. <laughs> it is. Um, don't Google it too much or we won't see you again. Uh, you can just don't go to Reddit. Time. Also, just don't do that for any for reason, Twitter. possibly. Also, maybe for any reason. We'll see. Um so thank you for listening. Thanks as always to our Patreon backers, Grizzly Rich, JD, Stephanie, Brian, Sir Lord Epic Name, Andrew, Christina, and Tony. Um, and to the two of you using nicknames on Patreon, uh, I believe in you uh, and don't stop. And also, if anyone else wants to sign up with nicknames, uh, I will use your nicknames instead because um, Sir Lord Epic Name is great and Grizzly Rich is also very strong um, and fits with our beard motif because we apparently have a beard motif. Um, so... Until yeah, next time. Yeah, beards uh, are a thing for all of us. They are. <laughs> um, and we are majestic. And uh, we own it. Um, I'm so glad this is an audio podcast. Yep. <laughs> look, we don't look immensely yeah, majestic yeah, I mean, right now, but it's 10.15 at night, like, all right? Literally, listeners, if you are lost, you cannot see all of this glorious facial hair that That's we true. are all rocking. One we day. could rub it against the mics, but that would be weird. That would be awful. Just, awful that radio. also makes terrible sounds sound that have yeah, to be edited it. out. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> Experience. <laughs> Experience is how he knows. Just gonna say. Um, yeah, this is not an ASMR honest. podcast. Early no. saving the game editing is and, how he knows. And it will also <laughs> never be an ASMR podcast. That goes on the list of things that aren't happening. Yeah. And I stand by that. Oh, I, don't know. I, not could, I could do an ASMR reading of, I don't know, one of these various core rule books I've got on my shelf. It's fine. If you need some way to help sleep, yeah, that would that would knock you right out.
we'll discuss that for the future. Um, All right. Sounds <laughs> good. Thank you for listening. If you need, yeah, for hanging out in the nonsense factory of which Peter has deemed me the foreman, um, which is a title <laughs> yep. I'm going to choose to embrace. Uh, this is our nonsense, and we're proud Excellent. of it. Uh, thank you for listening, um, and we'll see you around uh, for year number five of all of this nonsense that we like to do. And until next time, have a blessed day. Thanks for having me. It was great to be here. You beat me to it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to City on the Hill Gaming. If you'd like to hear more episodes, find us online at cityonthehillgaming.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at City on the Hill Game, on Instagram at City on the Hill Gaming. You can also find us on YouTube or Twitch by searching for City on the Hill Gaming. If you'd like to send us an email, you can find us at cityonthehillgaming at gmail.com. If you want to hear more from the Saving the Game folks, find them at stgcast.org for their backlog of episodes. And we're also on Patreon. You can find us at patreon.com slash cityonthehillgaming. Thanks as always to all of our Patreon backers, Grizzly Rich, JD, Stephanie, Brian, Sir Lord Epic Name, Andrew and Christina, and Tony. Thank you guys for all you do to support the show. We love you, and we appreciate all of your help. Thank you for listening, and have a blessed day. Greg, go! <laughs> a whole new spin on playing with your food. What is Beamboozled? It's fun in a box. The special 6th edition gift box comes with a spinner, 10 tasty flavors, and 10 weird and wild flavors, including two new ones. Is it pomegranate? or old bandage is it cappuccino or liver and onions spin the wheel and find out fake out your family and friends just don't get bean boozled yourself i refuse to accept the fact that bean boozled is complex enough to require the phrase additions to be any portion of their product branding i find that unacceptable ben go <laughs> before i get the deer stalker cape someone what? okay <laughs> The deerstalker cap and cape backed over the coat. The pipe, the grace of gaslit Victorian or Victoriana. The clip clop of carriages and cobblestone. The fog rolling in from England's imperial seas, Baker Street. Oh, uh, very good. This is the first paragraph of the introduction to very the good. complete Sherlock Holmes treasury. Oh, I respect that. Uh, More to come. Yeah, oh no, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> the major problem, uh, well, one of the major problems, for there's several, one of the many major problems with governing people is that of whom you get to do it, or, or rather, of who manages to get people to let them to do it to him. To summarize, it is a well-known fact that those people who must want to rule people are, ipso facto, those least suited to do it. To summarize the summary, anyone who is capable of getting themselves made president should on no account be allowed to do the job. <laughs> My head hurts Douglas now. Adams. Oh, that is Douglas okay. Adams from okay. the restaurant at the end of the universe. Huh. Uh, uh, Grant. Okay, so this is a oh, kind of classic Tumblr meme, but it's such a good story. I figured it'd be a good sound check. Um, quick note, this starts with a conversation about, you know, hey, keying and graffitiing somebody's car is old news now. If someone cheats, we go with their wardrobe with a seam ripper. And then somebody by the name of Schizo Freak replied, my mother did this to my father once. They got into an argument. My very pregnant and hormonal mother stormed off, except they lived in a tiny apartment. So the only place to go was to shut herself into the closet for a good long sulk. And while she was sitting in there fuming, she looked up and saw her sewing kit on the shelf and all my father's uniforms hanging right there. So she picked one shirt and one pair of trousers, carefully, methodically ripped out every third stitch out of every seam, and then hung them back up together so he would be likely to pick them up at the same time. This took her a couple hours, so by the time she was done, the anger had worn down. She came out, she and my father had a talk that ended in apologies, after which they were tired and went to bed. My mother swears up and down that she meant to warn my father about the sabotaged clothes in the morning, but he wore a different uniform set, and they were both still feeling a little raw, so she didn't want to bring up the fight again. She decided to tell him that night instead. And then she forgot. Anyway, about four days later, my father apparently came home roughly an hour after he left for work, his clothes slowly, gently shredding off his body, the most bewildered expression on his face. 
Paula, he said, his voice mildly shell-shocked. Paula, my clothes are broken. <laughs> my mother promptly <laughs> burst out laughing so hard that she went into labor. And that's the story of my birth, heralded by petty vengeance and utter confusion. <laughs> All right, we're going to come back to pregnancies in a minute. Uh, Peter, go. That's fantastic. <laughs> I don't have anything prepared, so yeah. All right, I'll bring I it back around. I can recite the 23rd Psalm from memory if you want. But... Sure, go for it. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Uh, and to bring it back to what Grant said uh, about babies being born, uh, I will simply say congratulations to William, who used to be a part of the show, and his wife, as uh, she is expecting. Yay! Oh, oh very wonderful. nice. So, Congratulations, William. Baby Roebuck on the way. Um, okay. And here we go. 